Minister of, of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, blames the Nigerian media for the country's poor image in security. And the former Minister of Aviation, Femi Fani Kayade, who said he would rather die than join the APC, has joined the ruling party and he's not dead. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anacom. The Nigerian media has been accused of giving Nigeria a poor image. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, made the accusation saying its efforts in fighting the security challenges in the country have been dismissively reported. He said the, to the unflattering portrayal of the country by the country's media, he said that is the reason why Nigeria is in or Nigerians in diaspora, investors and the international community at large are wary of visiting the country. He went on to say that security agencies have also successfully tackled the security of separatists in the southeast and southwest and the militants in the south-south. But unfortunately, these efforts were not well reflected in the reportage of the security challenges that Nigeria faces. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dikbo Olayoku. He's a journalist, Ufomai Bamuno who's a broadcast journalist, Annie Moore, edit, a journalist and producer uh, with West Africa Democracy Radio in Dakar, Senegal. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, I, 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 feel, I feel like there should be an, a woman on this team, but it's okay. Um, I'm, I'm glad to talk to all the men. I, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Digbo, because you seem to be um, the one who's been in this business longer than we all have been in. Uh, so... Of course, let's examine what the minister has to say. Um, we have the NBC, we have um, the we have Bonn, we have the Writers Association, we have all of these bodies that are supposed to check uh, and uh, you know control um, you know what we put out every day as the media. But when the the minister for information comes out with this kind of accusation. What does this, what image is he trying to paint of the Nigerian media? Uh, yes, thank you very, yes, thank you very much. Uh, before we go into that, there's something they call self-censorship. Before, before I elucidate on that, we need to state from the beginning that our job is a thankless job. Thankless is in the same that in spite of what we go through every day, forget the news, we will still discover that the journalist is an endangered state. Um, Mr. Laiku, I, I, we're having connection problems with you, so we're going to bring you back on uh, in a second. So just hold that thought. Uh, I'm just going to have to throw the question to Ufoma and uh, Imo. Um, Ufama, Mr. Alayaku is saying that this is a thankless job. It's, it's, it's a job that you never really get a nod for, uh, as, except you're, in, you're an entertainer, for example. Um, but if you're a broadcast journalist and you're a newsman, uh, he's saying that, first and foremost, it's a thankless job. But again, let's look at what the minister has to say about us. What picture is this painting of the Nigerian media? Um, Marianne, I, I think I remember a couple of weeks ago when um, I was on the show, I made a proverb. Uh, I talked about how, you know, the Isoko man um, is well known for his usage of um, cutlass. And um, so it's almost impossible. You don't carry cutlass at the back of an Isoko man. Uh, it's, it's almost forbidden. That's because he knows how um, effective that cutlass actually is. And that's almost exactly what, what is happening here with um, Lai, Lai Mohammed. Um, before 2015, when the APC got into power, um, the media was the darling of um, the Minister of Information and Culture. Mm -hmm. he, he almost always, you know, has this love relationship with the media because, um, you know, his relationship with the media was, to a large extent, what helped portray the previous government of um, Goodluck Jonathan in... Um, 
bad light. This is also not not um, giving excuses for the good luck Jonathan administration. It was it was terrible. It was bad, you know. But of course, they did a lot of bad things, and so uh, um, the, the the present minister, who was the um, who was um, the spokesperson of the opposition party at the time, used his connection with the media to, of course, portray all of these things. Well, they are now in power. He's been in power for six years. And unfortunately, things have gone from bad to worse. Um, you, you say it is white when it is black. Unfortunately, uh, to a large extent, I understand what he's trying to say. Um, you know, suggesting that uh, maybe, just maybe, when the media is not portraying the good part, um, that we're always talking about the negative. Uh, but unfortunately, it's our job to say it the way it is. And you and I know in this business, bad news sells. It's 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 just it's just the way it is. You can you can't run away from it. Um, so as much as we also want to be patriotic, like he's saying, we also want to you know talk about some of the gallant efforts of our military. Well, we can't stop reporting that bandits have attacked or terrorists. I should say because. I'm not going to join you know, that nonsense. You call them bandits. They're terrorists. They kill people. They kidnap people and all of that. We're not going to stop reporting the fact that they attacked the NDA. We're not going to stop reporting the fact that 30 um, soldiers, military officers, were reportedly killed sometime in April. You know, we're not going to stop reporting all of that. It's just the way it is. What uh, I think we're having problems with the former's connection, but I think we have Mr. Layaku back on the line. Mr. Layaku, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great. So we'll take it up from where you stopped. Go ahead. Yes. I, I, I said the two good thing. That's why I started by saying the journalist has a responsibility to protect national. And I went further to say that because of the job that we do, we are an endangered Because if you look at the question, section 22 gave us a specific goal. Oh. And maybe that is why we are the NP of the Especially people in government. It is our duty to report news. We don't make news. But the point is, why you owe it a responsibility or a duty to also look at that? I, th I, think, I think today we're struggling with the connections, both on our phone lines and, and, and I think the internet is also terrible. But let's toss to you, um, uh, Imoa. Hopefully, the internet in Senegal is better. Um, now, we it, both speakers have pointed to the issue of. Um, former has spoken about the fact that there might be something to what he's saying as to the sensational headlines, the, the fact that people want to buy more bad news. Because, you know, if you say that um, a man bit a, uh, a dog, bit a man, it's not necessarily news because dogs bite humans. But when you, the story says um, a, do, a man bit a dog, then, then that's news, obviously. And everybody wants to understand why a man would be crazy enough to bite a dog. Uh, and in this case, um, the Honourable Minister is saying that the, pr the press is picking and choosing or cherry picking in terms of what stories they want to highlight uh, and that, that, that we're not necessarily pushing um, the positives where, that, that the government has made in terms of winning the war, if there be any winning, uh, against insecurity. Well, first of all, I think um, uh, before I mention the minister and his uh, cohort enjoying the media when they were not in government. And I really see no reason why he would uh, want to castigate the media and this time around saying that uh, they are painting Nigeria in a bad light. I mean, it's a 50-50 thing, whether you, you like it or not, give or take. They have been in power for over five years and um, they have all the wherewithal, they have every power to change whatever people had perceived about Nigeria, you know, in the past decades, within this period of time. So I really don't make out anything from what he's saying that the media is painting the country in a bad light. 
every media world over, whether you like it or not, um, they state their headlines the way they are. I mean, if, if the terrorists kill or ransack villages and cause mayhem, instilling fear in people, the media will have to report that. I mean, going about to say that you should stop reporting insurgency attacks and all of that is just way beyond um, um, uh, handcuffing the media. So I, I think, first of all, um, I blame the government. If they know very well that the country is uh, in a bad light outside the country, uh, yes, they have, they have um, uh, it's on their table to ensure that they, they, they clean the mess and paint the picture uh, give a good picture to people outside. But isn't, isn't, now, isn't, isn't this a way of them trying to clean it because it's on their table and they feel that, well, the number one perpetrators or the number one people who seem to be painting this bad picture, according it's, to it them, is the, is the same media. media. It is the same media that will, that will give them what they want. And so you cannot, you cannot eat your cake and have it. It's the same media that will tell you, okay, Nigeria is doing well, the economy is booming and things you know, are happening. It's the same media that will report that they've been attacking in the north, in the east, in the west, and all of that. So you can't really have it. Like I said, it's a 50 50 thing. Now, the impression about the image of Nigeria, yes, he is right. I mean, there's no way you will leave the shores of the country. The, the very moment you open your mouth to say, I'm a Nigerian, oh, Nigeria, corruption. That's always the first thing. And it will take a while before, you know, that perception will be cleared. And people still talk, say good things about Nigeria, not because they see it in the media. I mean, they, the politicians, are the ones who go outside the country and display this affluence. So, I mean, would you say that people wouldn't um, that say what, what they've seen? They will say it and then put it back in the media. So really, it's a 50 50 thing. And you shouldn't put the blame on the media like he's doing. The media have a role to play, and that's what they've been doing over time. We report what we see. Uh, we set the opinion. We, we let them know, look, this is how the people are feeling. And if they don't like it that way, then that is their problem. I really don't agree with him, and I totally, totally disagree. My colleagues here in the car, when we saw the news, they were, they, they were laughing. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? We still look, we, we went ahead to see all the things he have, he have written over the years, when he was still the spokesperson for, uh, you know, his party before they, 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 I mean, he's still there. If you check his blog, Lai Mohammed is still there. All the things, he was the first to release a press uh, statement at every event. Lai Mohammed will release a statement at every event. Even when we're not supposed to cough, he will release a statement. So why is he now feeling bad that the media is reporting uh, what we are seeing? I, I really don't buy I'll that. Tell, I'll I, tell you why. I'll tell you why. Um, mm -hmm. Can you hear me clearly, Mary? Yes, yes, we can yes. hear you. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so here's the thing. It's it's one thing to um, run propaganda and be an opposition, or you know, it's another thing to be in power and hold the narrative. Um, they're two different things entirely. Mm. Um, you have to give it to Lai Mohammed. He was absolutely amazing. You know, I'm trying to look for more adjectives to actually describe um, how himself, you know, and um, of the opposition, you know, with with from general the, the present president right now to the a a APC um, um, leader Tinubu. You know, he was just spokesperson. He did an amazing job for the mm. five or six years or thereabout that Good Luck Jonathan was president, to always portray the Good Luck Jonathan pre presidency in, in a bad light. Like. You know, um, it, it, so he was king. He was great at doing that. And for the love of God, Good Luck Jonathan and his presidents also gave, gave them a lot of ammunition from bomb blasts in Yanya mm. happening, and the next day they're in Kanu, um, you know, dancing around and celebrating and all of that. There were lots of issues that happened that um, Lai Mohammed seized upon at that point in time. But like I said, it's one thing to run propaganda or it's one thing to point out ills and evil, you know, of one person. It's another thing to be on the saddle and also try oh, to what? hold the narrative. Unfortunately, mm. for six years, um, the president, the presidency, um, the Minister of Information, the spokespersons of the president, they have totally failed, 
you know, in, 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 I'm, I'm, and, I, and I miss no words here. They have failed. How have so they failed? They, you know, when you say they failed, in what in what regard have they failed? I think let me let me let me let me, let me, let me, let me help me out a bit. Uh, is uh, is uh, just just a second. Femi mm. additional or Gariba Lawal are always on the defensive. They're always trying to you know things will happen instead of them to come out as quickly as possible mm -hmm. to hold the narrative mm -hmm. or to give explanations no they won't two three days later when when the things have blown out of proportion they come out and they try to be on the defensive they try to insult people you see something is white you want to tell us that it is gray you insult our intelligence see nigerians are not kids anymore that's the honest truth in fact to a large extent they don't even to some extent, most times they don't even believe mainstream media anymore. Hmm. You know, that's because they also know that the government has either directly or indirectly tried to um, um, take hold of the media. So so the, the problem here is that for Lai Mohammed and the presidency spokesperson, all of them in that media department, they fail to tra translate from you know, running propaganda or being the opposition to running government and holding the narrative. So that's why you see what we're seeing right now. Okay, I, I just want to go into some things that he said, which I want you, maybe I'm going to throw this to you more. He said, and I quote, if one picks up most newspapers, watches most television stations, or listens to most radio stations in Nigeria today, he or she will be right to think that Nigeria is at war. Uh, yes, he says, we have challenges, especially in, that, in the area of security. But the, this administration has not only acknowledged these challenges, it is earnestly tackling you know, um, the challenges. So I ask you, Imor, because you're reporting mm. mostly on these things from the outside. And of course, I'm guessing that uh, when these things happen, they look to you as the Nigerian in the newsroom um, you know, for, more, for clarity. Um, yeah. How well do you think that the government has? Let's even talk. Let's leave the issue of information management on the one hand. Mm. How well has the government dealt and managed the challenges of herders or unknown gunmen or bandits or even the non-state actors that are creeping up every day? Mm. Well, first of all, that issue you mentioned is um, mostly what dominates our editorial meetings here. Um, sometimes. Uh, we're just two Nigerians here, and we used to feel the entire uh, Dakar Senegal news is about Nigeria. There is no day, there is no day you will not report an attack either in Kaduna, in Borodu, in, in Sokoto. There is just no day an attack will come. And once it happens, will you tell us not to report that? That is news for people who are not in Nigeria. Yeah. They will want to know, oh, why is there another attack in, 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 in Nigeria and, and all of that? I think the government and the, the, the media handlers of the current administration are not being proactive. Like uh, Ufama mentioned, uh, they should stop playing the blame game. As, as, as someone who is in the ruling party, you should be proactive. Before the Nigerians will think of anything, you, you drop it. and like, oh, these people are working. Before anything will happen, you, you drop it. You know, sometimes it will, it will take days before the military will release a statement about an attack that happened on Monday or Tuesday or, you know, or three days ago. And then you hear different, um, uh, you know, media reporting them, Reuters, APF and the rest of them, even also we're reporting it because of, you know, the, the correspondent we have there. I, I mean, that shouldn't be the case. It shouldn't be the case. I remember clearly this same insecurity, like before I mentioned, Lai Mohammed was always the first to report it. Oh, the government are not doing this. The state of insecurity is, is growing, this and that. They were reporting it. So it's now their turn to face the heat. So I wonder why they are seeing the media as those that are pushing these stories out to those in the world. If we sit in our home, even back there in Nigeria, we hear, we read stories and watch news of attacks in Sudan, Somalia, uh, Mali, Burkina Faso, and the rest of them. So what makes Nigeria different? What makes Nigeria different? Because we, you cannot have such an issue and then you don't report it. You don't report, I mean, it, it, it's crazy. The French colleagues there were asking me, why is your country like that? Why, why are they trying to stifle the, the, the media in Nigeria? I mean, there'll be issues that ordinarily the Nigerian media should have been the first to report. But you get to see these this stories on other international media. Why is that so? Because the government 
they have handcuffed the media in that okay. country. And that is what they have always had in mind when they come in. They knew the role the media played when they were in the op opposing side. And they felt, look, if they continue with this, we will lose that completely. In fact, they have lost as it is. Because the remaining years, whether they like it or not, the perception that they have presented to Nigerians will last till this government leaves. I tell you, every Nigerian we come across here, they don't say good thing about the, administ uh, the, the current administration. I'm not trying to, 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 to uh, paint them in a bad image, but that is always the perception we get. You go to the Nigerian embassy in Dakar here, it is still the same thing. People are complaining. Why is your government like that? Oh, Imo, you're from Nigeria. Why is Nigeria like that? Nigeria is supposed I, I, to be the I'm big one of Africa. Because the, the statement you made before now sounds more like mm. this administration knew that they were not going to be able to deliver. Uh, because Certainly. when you say because and, and because when you because when you say that six months yeah, but to because, set up a cabinet well because you, when you say that um, this mm. has always been their plan all along it, so, it sounds more like they they were only just selling us you know uh, uh, um, a whitewash of sorts and and you, you know but, that but, they were but, never you, going you to be able I, to you and I know that clearly I mean they never had anything on the agenda I mean go back to their manifesto and check. What was it that they wanted to give Nigerians? The only thing they campaigned on was uh, was corruption. To fight corruption, to, to, to deal with was, unemployment, and of course, um, um, no, 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 I mean, cor put an end to was the main banditry. Thing. They had, they, corruption was the main thing. Nigerians were tired of you know uh, what was happening at the moment, and they felt, okay, we don't have any other choice. If this is the man you guys are presenting, let's take him. And trust like Mohammed, like before mentioned, he did a great job painting that man in a good image painting those that will come in in a very good image, and Nigerians fell for it, and we are suffering you know, with that at the moment. So okay. it, will take a while. It, it, will take, it, it will take a while before Nigerians will even accept whatever this administration, administration will say. People okay. don't take them seriously okay. because of those that are heading the different areas. I think we have Dick Paulayoko back. Hopefully, this time we might be able to hear him. Uh, Mr. Layoko, you you're more of the print. Um, we, we, we hear about screaming headlines, uh, misleading openers on shows, um, sensationalism of certain stories. I mean, um, recently a, a particular TV station was put on the chopping board for um, analyzing something uh, from a point of, um, you know, uh, ignorance and making the media, again, look bad. Uh, and, and, of course, we also know that <laughs> um, bad news sales. So... Is this something that the media also needs to probably pause in its tracks to take a look at? Yes, we know that there's the, pol the, pol the, the politics to it uh, and the angle from which the Minister of Information is coming from. But sincerely, is the media complicit to, to an extent in, in the way that in our reportage, generally? Yes. In this approach, and you look at what is going to be the effect of my story on the society. There is an example that you have given before in the school of England. Two journalists or two reporters present covered an event. The other one said the cop the cop is half good. The other one said the cop is half empty. They are good within the same place, but from different parts. And that should be the decaction of every reporter on this. Nigeria is going to be a very important country as a journalist, as a reporter. Am I through my heart dousing the tension, or am I creating more tension? During the 9 11, that was what I had that I'm talking about. Uh, that American is the bomb in America. I was we were in the meeting. We were enjoying the story coming up. About two weeks after that, have been reported. A colleague drew my attention to something. A colleague in this room said, Do you notice something? That since this report has been coming up, that no American has ever shown the body of an American being pulled out of the rubble. That was when I became comfortable with it. It is true. Coincidentally, two months later, I went for a seminar, and the reporter from 
and CNN he was there. I took up this matter with them. And the senior reporter told me that no American broadcast power. We showed the dead body of an American being brought out from the room. That is what they call self -centered. So, so Mr. Nobody Mayaku, you're telling you're it. telling me that we seem to be you you you're saying that we as the Nigerian media are selling ourselves short. We're showing more of our weaknesses than our strengths. Is that what you're saying? Because according to the story, no, I mean, that's why I said it. This is my story. What is going to be the effect on the society? You see, oh, because Nigeria, we, are just, we just came out of a military regime. And then the journalists, for itself, are fighting the military to resource the rulers and others. But interestingly, many of us, we have not changed our disposition. That is what, maybe that's what you are saying, like Mohammed was saying. Hmm. In your reportage, you look at what is going to be the effect of this thing I'm reporting. And society. That should be the kind of principle of every journalist. It is called self censorship. No NBC will get you. No NBC, they don't need NBC. Hmm. But you yourself, by virtue of your position, what will be the effect of my story, my headline on the society? I think that's what's going to happen. Because if anything happens to this country, and the heavens fall, as people are saying, it's going to fall on everybody. I think that's the most important thing. Okay. Uh, Ufoma, interestingly, um, Mr. Layaku is bringing our attention to something, which uh, I, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm not sure if you hear, heard everything he said, but he was pointing to the fact that during the 9-11 attacks, um, no American fossil journalist or camera person um, showed images of Americans being taken out of the rubble uh, throughout that time. And then he asked why this was... Uh, and. And they said, well, it's not their style. You're not supposed to show the, weak, the weakness, you know. It's, it's supposed to show that, um, you know, maybe because we show our, I mean, all the things that happen, it makes us look weaker or that the uh, bandits are having the upper hand. And I had a conversation with somebody, an activist some time ago, and he said the same thing, that uh, as much as we talk about and report these things, we also need to um, show that our army is working because it also reflects badly or poorly on them and, and their psychology. But again, these are their thoughts, not mine. So going forward, because we must be able to cover all grounds so that every time these types of accusations come up, um, we would be able to say, well, on our end, we're good, we're straight, as compared to if we have loopholes. Um, so I'm going to start with you, um, Imo. Going forward, as the Nigerian media, and in reporting all of these things, not minding the politics that is around it, how do we get, make ourselves better uh, and, um, like Caesar's wife, be above superstition? Uh, sorry, sus uh, suspicion, I beg your pardon. For me, I think we have more issues um, on the negatives than the positives. Yes, we do have the good side of Nigeria, and no doubt. But usually, um, the positive must be able to overwhelm the negatives before uh, you can now say the media is reporting the positives. Uh, take, for instance, if you, if you stay in a country where basic things are, are working, there is steady power supply, um, there is pipe-borne water, there are good roads. Uh, that, I mean, you can walk about in the night without being harassed or the fear of being kidnapped. The economy is booming. The government are looking at the people and their social security for those who are unemployed. Um, the pension system is working. There is plans for the elderly or the um, aged citizens. I mean, people, re re the media won't really have time to, to, to um, look at uh, all of these things. When the case where these things are, are barely there, and the only news you have is the state of insecurity, which is so alarming, you really can't help but to report it. You really yeah. can't help. Like I said, whoever is handling the media in the military, whatever arm it is, must be proactive. And that is the only way. I mean, before the news gets out, you, you're able to issue a statement. I know in Nigeria it takes almost 72 hours or more before an official statement is issued in anything that, that happens. If, if, that, if they turn to, to being proactive, then I think um, people now start seeing, okay, the army said this, the army said that you will not allow, um, I mean, you stop hearing, oh, the mili a military source 
or yeah. an eyewitness said, because one, the army has been able to come out to issue a so statement we put the even before to bed. it is yes, as as it is. So um, yes, I also agree with uh, with Uncle Dipo. I, I quite agree with him, no doubt. And 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 again, um, if you if you look at if you look at Nigerians, Nigerians are they are fed up. And once they are fed up with, with whoever is leading or with the administration, they turn to what the media will offer, what is in the news. Oh, okay, mm. there's been an attack here, there's been an attack there. I mean, until the positives overtake the negative, then um, okay. we can now say, okay, uh, there have been so much uh, good thing coming out of Nigeria okay. uh, before all of that will stop. Oforma, quickly, because we're out of time. So, so here's what I think. I honestly, as, as, as much as I agree with what um, Mr. Dick was said, we're actually doing it. There are a lot of stories we're not putting out. At least I know in my newsroom, there are lots of things that come and we look at it and we're like, okay, okay, let's let's put a pause on this for now. You know, let's not heat up the polity like we always yeah. say. So, so to a large extent, uh, if we reported all of the things that come to our newsrooms, I, I'm sure, I don't know if... Lai Mohammed will probably be crying right now <laughs> because we're already doing a lot of that um, self-censorship. Mm. I also would not want to disagree with the fact that um, some of us also need to look, tell ourselves the truth. I, I see some some very sensational headlines, you know, with that with, with little or nothing to back up some mm. of those headlines. Yeah, it's a problem. You know, out of every 12 disciples, there would always be the Judas. No no doubt about it. I have my own issues with, you know, with a section of um, our media. But from a general point of view, we are doing a lot of the censorship. But the government itself is, if the government came to power on the back of promises about yeah. security, how they were going to take security mm. serious, which the previous government did not. But hey, it's gone from bad to worse. You're not going to tell me not to report that. Absolutely no way you're not going to report it because okay. it's happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to say thank you, gentlemen. Unfortunately, uh, time is not on our side. Uh, Ufo Mike Bamuno is the head of news uh, with Nigeria Info FM here in Lagos. Imo Edet is uh, of the... Um, is of the uh, Democratic Radio, okay, West Africa Democracy Radio Station in Senegal. Uh, my, I, I was thinking about something else. And then, of course, uh, we have Mr. Dikbo Olayoko, who is a veteran journalist, uh, joining us via telephone. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. All right. Thank you for having us. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, we will discuss defection, uh, the defection of Femi Fani Kayade to the ruling APC, even after he promised that he would never do it. Stay with us.